All right, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's try this again. <laughs> So yeah, yeah sorry. So I, I, my my landline is actually going through my computer, and uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, what school is this for again? Yeah, it's for uh, Cal State Long Beach. Cal yeah. State Long Beach. I can't. I think I've done Cal State before at some point. But anyway, go ahead. So how how'd yeah. you how'd you how'd you run into me? Yeah. So uh, the first thing is I watched the documentary on Netflix. Mm. Then. Um, then we're assigned to write an essay debunking a conspiracy theory. So I thought, oh, it would be easy to debunk flat earth. Sure. Um, so I, I tried to, I, I am trying to currently debunk flat earth. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, for this interview purpose, I will be coming from a neutral standpoint. Okay. Just so, just so. Because I don't want to, I don't want to uh, pretend that I I am a flat Earth believer, or I don't want to um, have bias in my questions, so that I will be uh, trying to debunk flat Earth. I'll, I'll just be asking neutral questions right. the entire time. What, wouldn't matter either way, but go ahead and uh, hit throw me what what you got. Great. Um, yeah. Do you mind? First question. Do you mind if I record this interview? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. My okay, my great. my computer records all the audio on everything that comes through anyway. So uh, if your audio has a problem, just let me know and I'll send you mine. Okay, great. Yeah. So. Cool. So the first question I wanted to ask was um, about the uh, religious experience in flat Earth. Uh, I know that there's a lot of um, people who believe in flat Earth, uh, and their belief stems through. Um, the 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 passages in the Bible. Yeah. Um, uh, around what percent of people would you say like affirm their faith in flat Earth because of uh, the Bible? At least half, and that's something. By the way, okay. it's, that's an interesting first question because the documentary avoided that at all costs. You know, they were yeah. really big on uh, the producers and the director and, and everybody. They did not want to bring religion to it at all. Even though the very first conference we did, which was the Raleigh conference in 2017, there was a huge contingency of, of very strong Christians in, in that group. Yeah. So it was, it was fascinating because after the conference, the promoter of the conference got got grief on both sides. One side said it was too religious, and the other side said it was not religious enough. <laughs> and so you couldn't oh, make wow. and so you couldn't make anyone happy. And so by the time we got to the Dallas conference, which was two years after that, we did Denver and then we did Dallas. The we were setting up two stages. One stage oh. was was more of the the Christian side, and the other side was was more secular. So anyway, yeah, at least half. And what I can tell you is the, the how that whole thing started was a guy named Rob Skiba, which, okay. which who did a, a website called TestingTheGlobe.com. dot com. And in fact, he was one of my early early interviews where he interviewed me, and he was coming out from a biblical prophecy side. And he went through the Bible with a fine tooth comb and had some of his other friends go get into it as well. And he came back and says, yeah, he goes, the Bible is a flat earth book. He goes, there's only one verse that even hints at a globe, which is Isaiah forty twenty two, which is he who sitteth right. upon the circle of the earth. And he goes, but in the Hebrew, he goes, circle is not ball. It's not globe. It's not sphere. Those are different words. And it was it was it was fascinating, and I did not know this when I made the clues. Obviously, I didn't go really. I mean, I touched on a little bit of the biblical stuff in in the clues, but I didn't do chapter and verse. And so, okay. what watching the Christian community come back, it was it was fascinating. Yeah, and I've 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 read most of the clues. I've read most of your work. So oh, cool. Um, yeah, I'm I've I've honestly been fascinated by this for like the last um, last like two weeks, two three weeks. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've, I've I've definitely done my research and I, I've I've been looking up everything. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a weird rabbit hole to go down for sure. Yes, yes, very much so. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So my second question to you um is about 
what uh, it specifically you believe. Uh, so do you believe that we live in an enclosed area of a larger planet, or is the Earth the only thing that exists? Uh, well, I, I can't discount the, the first one, which you mentioned, which is, is it possible that we're just living on a flat space on a much, much bigger sphere? Sure. But the question then you have to follow that up with is why are you still thinking sphere? Why? And, and, right. it's, and it's mostly because this is what you're taught. You know, we are taught space, 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 everything about outer space and everything about the, uh, you know, all the planets, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Pluto reclassified and, and everything else. Uh, I still hold hold true to that we, you know, outside of this world, we are living in, uh, we don't know what it is. So that we're basically living in a building. So, you know, with walls, sorry for the ringing phone, I'm not going to pick it up. The uh, uh, We're living, you know, in a, basically in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling and our best and brightest couldn't, didn't figure it out until almost 1960. What's outside of that building no one knows for sure, but with the one thing the community can agree on is that it's not outer space. So right. whatever you see, you know, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, those are all just lights in the sky, part of a giant, elaborate, very ornate clock system that predates language. That's all it is. And because people, again, people come back and they say, well, I can see Jupiter, the moons of Jupiter with my <laughs> telescope. I go, fine, go to a planetarium. Can you see Jupiter? Yes. Does it look spherical? Yes. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just lights on a ceiling. I go, who's to say when you walk outside, you're just not in a much, much bigger planetarium. And then, you know, right. every, then, then all the weight of responsibility falls on NASA, which we've been destroying for the last six years. So anyway, yeah. there you go. So <laughs> short, short answer, I, I don't discount the larger planet thing. I don't. But at the same time, you really have to ask yourself why why you're still why are you even thinking about planets. It's like, oh, that's yeah, def so definitely, yeah. Um, yeah. So next question is a little bit uh, touchy. I, I would understand. Um, no, that's fine. But uh, what's the best argument you've heard on uh, both sides of the uh, debate, like the flatter side and the rounder? Side? Oh yeah, no, I, I don't mind that question at all. The okay. <laughs> for the the best one on our side because it's the most popular. Well, all right, I'll give you the I'll give you the two because I'm kind of torn. The most if you ask any other flat earth, the, the most popular flat earth argument on our side is long distance photography. Far okay. and away, yeah. it's not discussed in the clues. People just decided to do it on their own. It's like let's go to a beach with a HD camera and just start shooting long distance. And it's like why? Because it's tabletop flat. Even my initial yeah. stuff talked about that it was a roulette table sort of feel to it where you know kind of a bow and, a, and kind of a center and, and people it's the internet misses nothing they say yeah you can't bring up roulette table uh you can't compare it to a roulette table i go why and they go because uh, all the numbers of a roulette table add up to 666 and yeah. i go yeah it's like is that real it's like yeah it absolutely is real um yeah so, i remember you teaching that in one of the videos yeah yeah so um do Long distance photography on our side, by far the most popular. The most convincing one for me, though, is gravity versus the vacuum of space, because okay. it it's yeah. it, it Can you uses explain that a little bit? yeah it's it uses it's kind of like a judo move where you're using the weight of your opponent against themselves, which is you're using sure. science. You you come at science and you say, okay, this is your law. Right, not a not a guideline, not a rule. It's a law. It absolutely will happen. Which is, a pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier. Straight up. Okay. That's why why you blow up a balloon yeah. with your mouth and you let go of the balloon million times out of a million times. It's always just going to fly off because the pressure is trying to equalize from the inside of the balloon to the outside of the balloon, and so okay. on and so on. There's tons of examples of this. Well, if that's the case, then how does uh, how does our atmosphere stay on on here with us? Why isn't it sucked off into the vacuum of space? And the, the knee jerk reaction, the only answer is one, which is why I love this. It's kind of like chess. The only answer is gravity. It's like, well, it's gravity. Gra yeah. Gravity holds the atmosphere. I go, I go, yeah, but gravity's not a barrier. It's a force if you believe it. You know, if you believe gravity is what they say it is. It's like, yeah. the, you know, so what happens when? 
you get up to you know where does the where does gravity lose its power you know where what happens at the bleeding edge of space and tell me exactly what happens at the bleeding edge of space and people i've had people come back to every answer from well it's only pulling at little lighter molecules so it's not pulling very hard to well the vacuum isn't really truly a vacuum it's like what are you talking about this is you, you, this is this isn't our definition it's yours so that's that's my favorite one most people go with long distance photography with though because you know, a picture is worth a thousand yeah. words and that's what they go for um the best argument against this is interesting because it's the one that's never used no one i'm su sp surprised that more people don't use this one and maybe it's because it requires a certain type of thinking to 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 propose it which is the antarctic 24-hour sun which is you know okay. you, everyone's seen our model and you see the sun traveling around yeah, it yeah, yeah. and it's like well yeah the 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 24 hour for the the center of the the model yeah that's perfect works perfectly perfectly but the 24 hour for the outer ring that's going to require a whole nother set of optics that's going to require something yeah. else possibly a second light source possibly a reflection issue that we don't know about but whatever's going on there, there's some engineering that we haven't figured out yet. But for whatever reason, sure. most people don't bring it up. And, and maybe one out of every 10 interviews I do, people say, well, what's the weakest argument of flat Earth? I go, oh, it's the Antarctic sun. That's it. Now, there's some people, there's two schools of thoughts there. There's some people that say there is no 24-hour Antarctic sun. And they'll show video, weird video clips where there's these chunks of time that are missing which I, I still can't figure it out. You know, and we've had a number of people, we have people call up the, the Antarctic stations. It's like, where's your freaking, you know, where's the 24-hour footage? And, and for whatever reason, they, they don't have it. But it's like, all right, all right, anyway, but the other school is, well, maybe there is something else happening out there. The, the big reason, though, why it's not pushed is because the, the, your access to Antarctic uh, waypoints is so limited because of the treaty that 99.99% you know, of population never ever goes down there, nor do they even want to go down there. Right. It's just massive negative yeah. reinforcement. The place just screams, go away. So and the only people that are down there are military and military contractors and military scientists. That's it. So, you, you, but anyway, that's the best argument against us, in my opinion. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's very interesting that you brought that up. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, another touchy question. Uh, you don't have to answer it if you don't want. Oh, you to. can ask anything you want. There's there's no question <laughs> off limits. Okay. Uh, was there ever a time when you thought of leaving the flat Earth community? Yeah, you can't ask that. No, I'm kidding. The um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I never. In fact, it was more of a challenge I put to myself because I didn't want to be in the flat Earth community to begin with. I, that that right. the documentary did get right. I had no intention of being in there because there was no community. It, it was like right. when when I got into it, I was just asking a question. It was just a cry for help, which was, "Hey, I can't figure out this. I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore." Internet hive mind, which I highly respect as a hive mind, you know, tell me where I went wrong, and they didn't. And so, but as far as, have I ever had my doubts? Well, the doubt, the only doubts I had were in the first six months when I was waiting, for, when I put the clues out and it was, everything was brand new and, I, and, I'm, and I'm waiting for, at, you know, I, I'd done some interviews and I had people call me, subject matter experts, and I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know how it goes. It's like, well, it's too, it's too good to be yeah. true. There's no way this thing is actually, I'm, you know, throw, you throw a, a rock out into the distance and you're expecting an echo and it doesn't come. And it, you know, meaning you're, you're expecting a, a reaction and that reaction isn't, isn't happening. So that was the only time I would even, because the doubt was, okay, well, what if I'm wrong? And then, but then the cement started hardening which was, you know, after the first year, in fact, what I kid with people is, you know, because I got that question like two years in, I said, look, if it hasn't happened by now, if you haven't, if you're on the scientific side and you haven't found the silver bullet by now to stop this thing, you're not going to, because the internet hive mind, I will say this, is fairly quick on picking up on things. And they and they didn't do it. So here we are, six years in, and no, yeah. I, I mean, I I 
it's hard for me. I go months and months now without even original questions. So, and we've seen all the arguments. That's the, the best part. The, the big reason why I knew I was going to... Uh, uh, all right, sorry. Let me circle back. If, if could I quit? The, the follow-up question is, is there, you may have, is, is there anything that somebody could do to make you quit? And yeah, of course, the, you know, the, the two wonderful answers, which are one, find me any 4K footage of a camera that's, point, that's, that's bolted onto the side of a, a rocket and it's facing down at the ground. It, you don't turn it off and this thing leaves orbit somehow. And then the, right. the, the world turns into a ball you know, uh, into a sphere as you leave. Or the vacuum chamber test, which is find me any spacesuit, loan me a spacesuit from any era, which is weird that no spacesuit has ever failed in the history of space. Uh, and then put me in a vacuum chamber down here on the ground. You don't have to send me to space. Put me in a vacuum chamber. Tell me how it works. Because that spacesuit defies the law of thermodynamics. It's what, what in that backpack, what magical thing in that backpack stops the vacuum of space from turning it into a parade float? One of those two things. I mean, I would, I would probably quit flat Earth tomorrow if I could get into into a spacesuit and go into a vacuum chamber, and I was fine. I could move my arms and legs, and my fingers would work fine. But it's never ever going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen, and no one's going to invite me into it, is because the the thermodynamic law is very easy to prove and cheap. Meaning I could prove whether, you know, because otherwise you, they could fake it, right? They put you in a chamber and they make a lot of noise. It's like, wow, you're in a vacuum, right? It's like, how would you know exactly. if you were in a vacuum? Because it's invisible. And the vacuum is no different from our visual spectrum than an ordinary room. Well, there's yeah. three things really cheap. I mean, $4 for the whole mess. Uh, a balloon that's partially filled. That would just blow up, blow up you know, expand, expand, and detonate. Uh, a, yeah. a plastic cup filled with tap water. Because tap water boils, you technically, not from heat, but from the, the pressure issue uh, at, at room temperature. And a bell. <laughs> even, even the bell is probably the simple one. It's like, well, you can only one bring one thing and find the bell. Because a bell can't make sound in a vacuum, which we've seen yeah. in, in bell tests all over. Well, pff, those three things. I mean, hell, just bring me into the freaking bell. And if it doesn't make noise, great, I'm in a vacuum chamber. Uh, but it's never, ever going to happen. So, sorry, long-winded answer, but there it is. No, it's good. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, another question I have is about um, is about like how the whole flat Earth works. Um, yeah. I, I've I've always been very curious about uh, what sunsets are. Like uh, how how does the sun set, or like where does it go? Because the sun we can visually see the sun going down. Oh, can you now? <laughs> We, I thought the same thing. No different than a boat going down over the horizon. You know, the sun, sun brighter, easy to spot. It's like, well, it's obviously it's setting. It's going over the horizon. It's going over the hill. We thought that too until we started putting filters on our cameras and shooting long distance. You know, uh, what what we found, and there's some wonderful videos even on my channel where I've, I've shown people uh, the Flat Earth Shortlist for New People playlist that I have is that goes into this. And basically the sun doesn't set. It just goes off into the distance and then just fades away. But because of the thickness of the atmosphere, it kind of looks, it kind of flattens out. I mean, remember if it was truly setting, you see this perfect sphere setting, but it doesn't. It flattens out into this weird squashed oblate spheroid and then and then supposedly it goes it goes down but actually it's not it's it's just going away and let me explain this really quick <clears throat> when i say the thickness of the atmosphere because one of your questions you sound intelligent enough because most people would ask me it's like well why can't you see japan from california or europe from <laughs> from florida and hey, why can't you see mount everest from everywhere because technically Mount Everest is the highest place. There's nothing to obstruct yeah. it. And I go, the, the difference is, is the thickness of the atmosphere. It's a really weird concept. People don't think about it because, it's again, it's invisible. The difference between what we're talking in right now, what your room is filled with, is not nothing. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. But it's 
transparent to our eyes, 99.9% transparent. It's not perfectly transparent. You're breathing in actually mostly nitrogen, 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. Yep. I know there's some trace gases, but who cares? We're not going to, we're not going to break that down. That's too, <laughs> that's too geeky. So, but, but you compare that to a vacuum chamber, it looks absolutely the same. So when you're looking off into the distance, eventually the, it, you know, it compounds horizontally. So it's 90% transparent, 80, 70, 60, 50. And then finally, it's because it's, remember, we're basically just, we're not even really walking around this world. We're kind of swimming. <laughs> That's all we're really doing. Sure, but, it, yeah. but, it, but it's this soup and people go and I don't get it. I go, okay, if you've ever s known a scuba diver, when you get down, even in the most beautiful place, the high noon sun, you get down to 200 feet, that sun is gone. Why? Because the sun cannot penetrate that much water. It, it, you start losing uh, color spectrums almost immediately. So the, the only difference between water and what we're in now is really just density. You know, we're just, so anyway, the sun goes off in the distance. And between the density of the atmosphere and the, sun, and, and the fact that the sun is very, very, very small, it just goes away. And, and I'm not going to be able to do it justice in an, in an audio interview, but... Look up some of the videos on my channel. They're fascinating. I mean, watching watching the sun with an HD camera cranked up on its zoom, where it just, you can see the sphere's there, and then it just goes, whew, it just fades off like a, like a whale swimming away from you underwater. You, know, you see it, it's, yeah. you see the underside, it's perfectly there, and then within 100 yards later, it's gone. It's like, why? Well, because you can't see that far in water. You know? Can't see that far in air either. Right. Yeah. Go. Yeah. So, um, my my last question about the the theory side. Mm -hmm. Um, I have more I have more questions later about the business side of it. Okay. Um, but uh, my last question about the theory side is, uh, at what point in history did people become indoctrinated by the round Earth theory? Best I can tell, five hundred years. Give or take. Yeah, you okay. got to remember that back then, I mean, yeah, I, you could say that, that the Greeks, it's like, oh, we proved a sphere, but eh, how much credit can you give them when they, when even the continents were discovered yet? And it's like, oh, right. we, we, we love this. And as you know, exploration back then was dicey at best. So let's round up to, <laughs> to, to 500 years ago only because, oh, and even then, oh, what a pain. Because remember, 500 years ago, most of the population of the world didn't know how to read and write. It was a yeah. it was a pretty simple time. The, the 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 top your top thing on your list of things to do, even though there was no list of things to do because you couldn't write it, was just staying alive. Yeah, yeah. It, overweight people not really a thing back then. <laughs> it was more no. es es escaping disease and everything else. So, yeah, but but it was subtle. Meaning, you push this globe out there, and even even uh, Copernicus didn't allow his stuff to be published until years after he died because he was so afraid of his reputation. Which I should bring bring up real quick because you're in the academia world, which is when you reach yeah. a certain level of academic status, for lack of a better term. All you care about is that status. You you, you want to be peer reviewed. You want to be published. And you, the last thing, you, the, one of the scariest words in the academic world is ostracized. You do yeah. not. It's a click that you do never, ever want to get kicked out of. And so you, you don't want to break ranks ever. And so for him, it was, he was even afraid at death of destroying his legacy. So he wanted to make, you know, he wanted to distance himself, even though he was in the grave. He didn't allow his stuff to be, to be released until years later. So anyway, so there you go. But for, for me and, and everywhere in the community, we, we, our consensus is eh, 500 years, the globes. You know, where, where you started seeing the globe starting being pushed out is slowly but surely universities first and then secondary schools and then finally primary schools. Where now you can't escape them. They're freaking everywhere. Oh, by the way, if you yeah. get into this and you start, if, I don't know how much media you watch, you will be stunned how many globes you will see in mainstream television and or movies. They're everywhere. Uh, and places that don't even make sense. I mean, I get it. Fine. The teacher's classroom. I get that. 
But it's like, why would the doctor's office have it? Why would that financial guy have it? Why is it on the top of a filing cabinet of a detective's office? And not just any detective's office. Every freaking show has a, has a globe somewhere. And you miss it if you're not in our community because it, it just it just blends in with the background. So, well, it's obvious that that long that 20 year detective in Chicago would have a globe on the top of his filing cabinet. Of course. Why, why, why wouldn't he? Yeah. Anyway. I, I would never. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to shift gears here and uh, ask you questions about the whole business side of the flat earth community. Sure. Um, the, the first question, this might be a bit too direct, but uh, about how much do you make a year? Well, now practically nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, right. the, well, I, all right. Let me let's back up to 2019, uh, and I won't I won't tell you. I, I unfortunately I can't. I, I I'm not for various reasons. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I won't tell you what I what I made in 2019, but that was that was when we were at the the top of our game. I mean, I did because I was getting I'm getting paid for you know some hits on YouTube. You know, I'm not as big as other yeah. channels, obviously. Um, a little bit from the books, uh, Flat Earth Clues, Flat Earth Clues End of the World, and the Survival Guide, which I would never have released except that, you know, the whole end of the world thing that, that could, may or may not be happening. And uh, and then some public speaking things that I would do. I, I don't really sell any merchandise, you know, t-shirts and, and crap like that. Uh, but I would get paid to, to do certain things around you know, different different countries. And in 2019, I also, heck, I even did a, uh, a television commercial down in Australia, out of all places. It was super weird where they just called me and said, hey, can you be here in 10 days? And it's like, why? It's like, we want you to represent a mobile app. Now, granted, it was a tongue-in-cheek thing because the, the campaign was called uh, Foolproof, which means if you can use our, if these people can use our app, anyone can use our app. And I was the only, uh... I know, I was the only non-actor, which was weird. As I it, when, huh. when I when I was down there, I was tell, I was asking them. So why am I here? If everybody else is, is, you've got multiple Americans that you're using Australian actors to pretend to be Americans. Why didn't you just have a, an Australian pretend to be a flat earther? It's interesting. Was that there were people in the company that were in in the flat Earth. They were part of our community, but they were since ninety percent of our community is still in the closet. They were sort of in in the shadows, as it were. And so I met them, right. and you know we did the commercial and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's awfully nice. So, um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so 2019, great, wonderful. Uh, I I wasn't going to complain for, for you know it, it's enough to pay the bills. Let's put it that way. But then in you know last year we couldn't even we did I think one conference last year, which was in South Carolina, and the reason was is because we have when we look for conferences now. Since we're conspiracy people, we try to find a mask free, you know, uh, because conspiracy people aren't going to wear masks. And right. that's tough to do. You try to find because of corporate liability. Our big conference last year was supposed to be in Vegas and we couldn't find a venue that would allow us in there. And so we had to find one out in South Carolina. In fact, it was the, the, a Shriners convention. Which has you know, which are tied to the Masons, which is a whole nother conspiracy thing. It's like, okay, well, the enemy of our enemy is our friend. How about that? So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's some people that that you know make money off YouTube. They get the nickels from YouTube, and some people sell T-shirts. But it is not a uh, it is not a big money maker by any stretch. Nobody, I I will be the first one to say it, but every no one would disagree with me in our community, which is ev the the everyone that gets into it. They don't get into it for the money. They get into it because it's this revelation, this truth epiphany that you get right. the Jerry Maguire moment where you wake up and you're like, wow. And then you, you don't care about anything else. You just start telling people. I mean, divorces happen because of it. Family breakups happen because of it. Uh, weird things happen in companies where, you know, if you're too public in the company, you are then known as the flat earth person. So it's, yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, um, I think I have a couple more questions about um, sure. business side. Uh, 
I'm just curious as to how uh, the Flat Earth conferences work. Like, how do you how how does scheduling work? Is there a committee to plan it or no? It was it was very loose. I'll tell you the, okay. the I'll tell you the Raleigh conference and the Denver conference and the Dallas conference and of course the the, the South Carolina thing was different. I uh, the core group of people we're all in contact through social media, and you kind of see like, like the the first three conferences which were done by Robbie Davidson. He's out of Canada. He 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 did it pretty much what you would expect, which is he tries to see who's the the up and coming people who are the most popular flat earth people and doing right. doing social media and various things who would who would you think would and he would would ask around and, and because social media i mean you can get a, a fairly good consensus quickly you go through chat yeah. rooms it's like oh yeah i'm thinking of bringing this person to the conference thinking of bringing this person. and and the the lineup would slightly change between the time he announced the conference and the time he get there i mean every once in a while someone would drop out but, but someone else would 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 rise. There was no shortage of people to bring uh, to it because there's tons of people on social media that have channels. But you look for for the ones that aren't too controversial. And well, in Robbie's case, because he comes from a strong Christian background, he, at least half the conference was Christian. So right. it was weird. So the, the in in that regard, where we you know no one. No one disagreed with all of his picks. I I don't think I really complained about the. the I mean, yes, there were going to be some some conflicts because some people didn't like each other. But since it was a common goal, we kind of got over it. The only pro, like the first conference was was per, almost perfect in the, that regard. The the second right. conference we ran into a problem because Logan Paul showed up and and he tried to punk uh, us. Like, yeah, that was that was awful. And that was, that was the only conference I left early because I did not want to. Because the, the, Logan insisted that it was kept a secret. And so nobody knew until the night before. And, I, and the thing was because Logan's got a much, much younger audience. I mean, we're talking eighth graders, yeah. freshmen in high school. Oh, that's, yeah. a, it, that's a young group. Yeah. Uh, I, but I did enough internet research. I knew who the guy was when, when it was told to me. It's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be Logan Paul. I go, it can't be Logan Paul. He's a freaking troll. He's a professional troll. That's all he does. And, yeah. and but our our conference promoter was convinced that he wasn't going to troll him. This was going to be his first serious thing. I'm going, yeah, you are dreaming. Uh, and then three months later, he released his his compilation. And, of course, it was a, it was a monstrous troll. Um, the second the second big one we did, which was uh, – or the third one we – that was Denver. The third one we did was Dallas. Uh, the only controversy there was Jimmy Kimmel uh, from the late, late show or Tonight Show or whatever, which one he does. He hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he he contacted the promoter and asked if he could send a team, and which and, and it's like, oh, okay, well you're being above board, and 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 as long as you don't, you know, as long as you play by the rules and and everything, you're not going to troll us. That's fine. Which was true. His te his official team did not troll us. However, he sent in an extra guy that was not announced. He was not on the bill, and he, he went came dressed as one of us, and you know paid full full freight, and then spent the morning trying to. What they did it was very sneaky. This guy was talking to people, and the camera guys would shoot him long distance, <laughs> you know, from quite a ways yeah. away, and he was mic'd up the entire time. So it, that was a little bit of controversy, but for the rest of it, again, is pretty informal. The, we just bring in the people. It's like, oh, you know, we there's the the core group of people that were in the documentary. They're kind of in on it, where they're kind of asking, like, "What do you think of this? What do you think of this per person?" But if you if you're hosting the promotion or if you're ho hosting the conference, you you have the final say because it's your it's your deal. And the first three were yeah. really done by one guy. Which was Robbie Davidson. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Last question here. Final question. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone who wants to know the truth about the curvature of the Earth? Don't look at like it. just. Oh, I mean, they're they're getting into it. Are we talking about someone that is just yeah. being introduced, or or someone? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, first off, which I which I have said in many occasions like if you like your life the way it is if you wake up and, and think that everything is awesome thumbs up 
don't look at this because there is a point of no return in the flat earth very similar to the matrix red pill blue pill yeah. thing uh yeah. because once you 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 there's how many cliches you can't unring the bell once you see it you can't unsee it which is why our retention rate and i don't know if they talked about it in the documentary or not i don't think they did we have a 99 percent retention rate meaning yeah, yeah what, i know you I mean, it's yeah. it's true though, it, because because you are the one. I don't convince you. I I'm, not, I'm I don't convince you. I don't persuade you. All I do is throw the idea out there and let you run it with it, and you figure it out usually on your own at home, in in, in the privacy of wherever it is. And right. if you get into flat Earth, then you you can't. Un, how are you going to put the globe back together? You were the one that tore it back down. As far as people trying to find you so you find the curvature or not or or find evidence one way or the other other the curvature is that the question yeah uh, yeah find evidence one way or the other the well again the, the most popular one which is the curvature formula that's the long distance photography which is usually that's what convinces people which is that meaning out of well, let's say out of 10 people that get into flat earth probably eight of them it's it it's the long distance photography that does it, which is the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared, which means that eventually, like a boat or the sun or whatever, whatever, when it goes off for, far enough in the distance, you shouldn't see it anymore ever right. because it's on the other side of the hill. So why, when we bring just bring better cameras, can we see these objects? And the, again, you see with your naked eye and I know the naked eye only has a certain length. But what's interesting yeah. is when you use an HD camera and you crank it up for a while. Oh, yeah, the boat's, got, the boat's there. And then it goes off again and you crank up the zoom further. The, the HD cameras really, really have, have come a long way in the last 10 years. That's, yeah. that's usually it because this, it's an easy – it takes a little while to understand people for, – for people to understand because it's, it's algebra, right? Age, eight inches per – in fact, it's funny – watching people's eyes when i say that i go it's eight inches per mile they're like i'm with you i'm with you i go squared and they go ah crap nope i'm gone because they, they you know no one remembers what junior high and high school what we learned in math we're just struggling to get through those freaking classes or at least i was so if if once they kind of understand that which is look it's too or you, you take the math out of it which is what i did in the clues we, but i didn't talk talk about this in the clues is if it goes far enough, it should not ever be visible again. And we see objects so many times now that are long, long distances to where now the challenge is, okay, find me an object that you should, that we never can see. You know, find me an object at 70 miles. It's like you never, ever, ever will be able to see that object at seven miles. Now you can't choose a, a body of water that, that is so turbulent, you know, that the weather's always horrible all the time. In fact, it was the, someone someone wrote me like two weeks ago, and they said uh, Cuba, from the point the the farthest south point of Key West, and I said, "Wow, that's really good." I don't, has anyone even down there? Has anyone done that? And I don't think anyone's done it because who, how many people go to the farthest thing of Key West and try to shoot Cuba? I should probably look that one up. But the but yeah. again, it's the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of tricky out there. I mean, you'd have to find a really really calm day completely calm between Key West and Cuba. I don't know if it exists. Kind of like the like the English Channel when you're shooting from uh um uh the southern part part of England to France. Uh, I don't know if anyone can do that either. So anyway, sorry. That's that's the one I would show people. It's like, look, you want to sh the curvature of the earth? Yeah, long distance photography. So well, I mean, you could yeah. there are laser tests fine, but you don't have to use laser tests. You can I would I would do just straight up long distance photography. In fact, uh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, down in your neck of the woods, the two things I would I would point out, which would be the Salton Sea mirror experiments, which we've done. I'm pretty sure that's in my experiment list playlist. Which is because we couldn't use lasers during the day because the sunlight. And someone said, someone said, hey, why don't we just buy a cheap mirror and put it on the beach on the other side and use the sun as it's kind of like a poor man's laser, and that worked. And, oh, okay. And you, 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 it just punched right through the distortion, you know, even with the heat and the salt and sea. That's a horrible place, by the way. 
And most people don't even know. There's like, oh, yeah, there's a complete salt, horrible, like a dead sea, which is just east of Los Angeles. It's really big. It was supposed to be the, the new thing. You know, it was supposed to be this wonderful real estate development, but then the, the lake turned out to be toxic. Um, but the other oh. thing is, sorry, one more thing, which is uh, it's part of the long distance photography, uh, which is the oil rig test off of Santa Barbara. Which we that, that's one of the top videos that I put in my test section, which is the the oil rigs, I think of like six and nine or seven and ten miles, depending on which angle you're shooting at. What's interesting is you know you shoot these you you go first thing in the morning, you go down there and you look at these oil rigs, you know one at we'll just say six and nine six and six and yeah. nine miles, and you line them up so you can see both of them simultaneously. You say, what's the point? I go, my point is is that when you look at the video, the horizon is behind those those rigs. They can't be. If, if I've got so many people who say, oh, yeah, the sailboat's chopped off in the middle of snow. That's just atmospheric lensing. But when you're looking at these oil rigs, the horizon cannot be behind them. There is no distortion. There is no atmospheric effect that can put that horizon behind them, meaning you can't have the horizon cutting off the oil rigs and be behind them simultaneously. And that just freaks trolls out to where i've even yeah. I, I had a troll come back and they say well that's not the real horizon it's like what it's like the real horizon is invisible and in front of it it's like a, what is where we're even coming up with this they could not they would not they refused you know the five stages of acceptance that they refuse to see it and, and so, I mean, they, they cannot, they cannot accept it with like, well, it's got to be a cloud bank. I go, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a, if it's a bank of Swiss cheese back there, it's behind the rigs. And they just, they're like, eventually they resort to, well, you're, you're dumb. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> like, that's what you're going to use. Sorry. L- let me, let me end this part with this, which is, uh, you, have you heard of the, uh, the Dunning? I think they talked about it in the, um, uh, the, the documentary, which was the Dunning-Kruger effect? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. I love that effect, or I love that, that thesis so much because it is the childhood argument of, it, we've all heard this, right? The playground argument. It's like, you're too dumb to know how dumb you are, right? We've all heard this growing up. It's like you're picking on somebody, somebody's picking on somebody, and somebody throws out that, you're too stupid to know how stupid you are. That's all the yeah. Dunning Kruger effect is. It's, just, it's like okay, somebody thought after their masters that when you know, some not picking on the, the nerdlings out there too much, but they was like you know because obviously they were picked on as, as kids. And it's like you know what? I think I can actually stretch stretch this into a PhD. <laughs> and they get their friend. It's like yeah, 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 let's do this, and they did. They took it and t- and absolutely made it into a PhD. So when you hear somebody says the Dunning Kruger effect, that is just a PhD term for you're too dumb to know how dumb you are. And yeah. someone stamped that off. Oh yeah, that sounds like a totally totally solid thesis. Let's let's approve this. Someone got their doc. Multiple people got their doctorates based on that concept. And it's used even, uh, it just kills me when I watch, when I see scientists and well, obviously these people are suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's like, because you don't want to say what you really want to say, which is, well, obviously the people are, are just morons. It's, they don't even know it. Yeah. It's like, wow. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Really glad, glad we have, um, we have evolved. Anyway, anything else I can do for you? Um. No, that's about all my questions. Um, yeah, thank you so much for uh, doing this interview with me. Uh, yeah. It was very, it was a very good experience, and um, I'll make sure to send you a copy of uh, oh, my yeah. paper afterwards. Yeah, yeah, please, so please, can- please, please do. If you need any resources, or if you want anyone else to talk to, if anyone else on on YouTube, you know, there's a ton of people out there. Uh, any anything you need, just. Let me know, and I'll. If I don't know where to find it uh, directly, I will know someone who will find it. Great. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. All right. And you have, have a good, a wonderful. Good afternoon. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.